Welcome to the second installment of beating the pharmaceutical company at their own game. Just to recap what I said earlier is that inside of every cell there's DNA. DNA makes protein. Proteins run those cells. They make them work. Sometimes those proteins are inflammation type proteins. Sometimes they're blissful proteins. But either way, the nucleus of your cell, inside the middle of it, it has DNA, which makes protein. But the DNA itself cannot be activated on its own. It is not a brain. It is nothing more than a cookbook or a recipe filled with recipes to promote the production of proteins, which are the signal callers of the cell and how the cell works. So what then actually turns the DNA on so that it can produce the proteins? That would be the receptors sitting around the outside of the cell, which are picking up signals from the outside of the cell. In other words, the environment around the cell is the key to activating the proteins from the nucleus. Why is that important? Because that's how humans work. That's how you work. Your environment dictates whether you will be successful in your venture or whether you will fail miserably in your venture because you're made of 50 trillion cells. And I'm only considering a single cell at the moment, but hey, one cell's got 49 trillion and whatever, 999 billion other cells just like it. You're nothing more than a collection of cells. So that environment around the cell is what activates the DNA. Not the DNA itself. That's why drug companies want to try to sell you on the fact that there's a problem in your genetic sequence. There's a problem in your DNA. And we now have drugs that can get in and re-engineer your DNA so that you make proteins that we want you to make. But in reality, you're just messing around with something that you should not be messing around with, at least because of the fact that we could do this on our own. You have receptors all around the cell for so many different types of stimuli, whether that's calcium, whether that's estrogen, testosterone, whether that's glucose or insulin. Your cells are constantly listening to the environment and then they produce activity in the nucleus because of that. The nucleus promotes the proteins, the proteins run the cell. That's it, fellas. That's it. Now, you said, geez, doc, that's a lot. I know it's a lot, but that's how it runs. So the question is, is your DNA damaged and do you need drugs? Well, 98% of America, at least, does not have this problem. 98% of America has put themselves in the worst possible environment. Their conditions suck. Your job is miserable and you can't stand the people you work with. Crappy environment, crappy genetic activation, inflammatory proteins, and now guess what? You're getting fat, you're getting neck pain, you're getting anxious, you're getting depressed. The body's reacting to the environment by activating the genes. So what is this called? This is called epigenetics. It's a way of taking a healthy gene system, a healthy genetic system, and then activating like crazy from an awful environment. What would happen if you cleaned up your environment? Then you would activate specific genetic sequences, which would then produce proteins, which would make this cell work really, really good. And 50 trillion high functioning cells means we got ourselves a high functioning person. Interesting thing, talk about the nucleus being able to respond to the environment. <clears throat> and this is kind of cool because the environment runs the deal. So Bruce Lipton, who's a PhD in stem cell biology, he says, listen, I did this amazing thing. I took a uh, a stem cell, a small blastic stem cell, stem cell. It's kind of a neutral cell. It's just this simple little thing that is responsible for maturing into a certain cell in the body to help the body repair. So let's say you fell down, you scuffed your knee really bad. You cut the knee open. It's like, it looks like shit and you have to have it sewn up. When it's all sewn up and the doctor has done his work, then you heal on your own by what? You have these blastic stem cells, which go in and become just like the tissue that they're sitting in. So a simple generic cell then turns itself into skin cells and, and muscle cells in order to do what? To repair the damage. So this is what Bruce did. It's pretty cool, I love it. He says, I took three different stem cells, or should I say three stem cells, which are genetically a match. They are exactly the same. They're identical. And he takes A, the first one, and puts it in a culture medium. That's what we use in science. We call it, we put it in a, in a dish. 
and then we change the pH, we change the light signals, we change the temperature, we change the glucose within the medium. The culture medium is what the cell sits in. This cell, cell A, was sitting in a specific culture. The other cell was sitting in a different culture, and the other one was in a different culture. So guess what happened? This blastic cell responded to the environment. So in the first environment, this cell turned itself into bone cells. In the second environment, which was different, it turned itself into a muscle cell. And in the third environment, it turned itself into a fat cell. What was the difference? Was each one genetically different? No, they were genetically the same. But because the outside medium where the cell was, wasn't the same for all three, the cell, the nucleus, responds to the environment. This is how we knew it even existed. It's pure science, fellas. It's not conjecture. It's science. Now, having said that, what could we do now to actually change our environment? You already know, and I alluded to this on the previous episode. Could you change your diet? Would that help? Well, you'd be bringing different signals to the cell. So yes, that would activate the receptors on the cell, which would then activate the DNA, which would make proteins, which are a complete reflection of the broccoli you just ate. But if you ate a cheesesteak compared to a broccoli, there's different signals coming to the cell. The cell responds differently. And because you're a collection of cells, you become different as a consequence of your diet. You become different as a consequence of your exercise or non-exercise, or ample sleep or not enough sleep. All these things are important. But this is what we hear about more often than not, are the physical things that affect the around the aspect of the cell. But what I want you to know is it's way more than that. The most powerful thing is the way you think. It's the way you think because the way you think will change the environment of the cell itself. It'll change the culture medium. How the hell does that happen? How can that even be? Well, think of this. How do you get like nutrients and and hormones and everything to your body, to all your tissues. You need the blood system. So when you're stressed out and you go to work today, you're sitting next to this guy and all he does is fart all day or he clears his throat and it drives you insane. Somehow you're just like, ah, this guy, he violates me. I can't stand him. Well, when you're going through that, what you're doing is you're producing an environment that's activating the DNA to produce proteins which are inflammatory. You're making yourself sick. Matter of fact, you're living with two separate switches. One from your brain is the crisis switch. That sucker is on incessantly in every one of us. TV, internet, media, fake news, all the bull crap that's out there. They wanna draw you in as strongly as they can to that negative news because your brain is built on the negative uh, uh, on negative vibes. You're like, seriously? Yes, your subconscious brain has been built to keep you alive. And therefore, 70% of what you, th of, of your subconscious mind is negative. So you tend to think the negative first. You got to train yourself out of that. Because if you think in the negative, what you're going to do is think in crisis. And if you think in crisis, your brain releases epinephrine, norepinephrine, which are adrenaline hormones. And it also releases uh, the all proverbial stress hormone called cortisol. Those are stress chemistries. When they get around the cell, they tell the nucleus, hey, produce these inflammatory proteins because that's what's going on in the, in the outside. Uh-oh, well, that sucks. Now the cells begin to degrade. You know somebody who's stressing out big time, whether they've had loss of a child, loss of a dog, whether they lost their job, whether they're just programmed for negative behaviors, and their life just generally sucks. Well, their body breaks down quickly. But you have a second switch in there. It's the blissful switch when you're really happy. If you have children, when you hug them, you release a chemical called oxytocin. When you go out and you spend time with friends, you're releasing dopamine, endorphins, enkephalins, vasopressin. These are all tremendous chemicals. They're like human heroin chemicals. They feel great for us. And they get into the bloodstream and they surround your cell structures. And then your DNA responds to that by producing proteins, which makes the cells healthy. All of that is how you beat the drug company by changing your lifestyle. And the first thing you can do right off the bat is change the way you think. What you think about releases chemistry into the bloodstream, sits around the cell and either makes the cell phenomenal or it makes the cell suck. One or the other, you have to decide what you wanna do. So when mama said change your attitude, will you young man? When you change the attitude, you actually change the secretion of the hormone from the brain, from 
stress hormone chemistry to blissful chemistry. The chemistry leaks to the bloodstream. The bloodstream draws it in all around the cell. The nucleus is now responding to that signal. The nucleus produces proteins, which are what? They're healing proteins. They're energy production proteins. They keep everything working. Now your body feels fantastic because of your attitude. Get it? That's the connection, right? Between what your brain thinks about daily and how your body responds. It is not what the drug company told you that you're simply damaged goods, that there's a problem in you. That is not true. Unless you happen to be one of the 2% that has a genetic disorder. And by all means, medication might be the damn thing that you need. And I'm not anti-medication. I'm just pro-human. Fix yourself the best that you can by changing your environment. Once you shift the environment, the whole body begins to change. Just recently, I had a, uh, a young girl who was a, a patient of mine. And she was behaviorally a mess and physically a mess. But what we really realized the problem was wasn't the fact that she needed you know, certain doctors to treat her. What she needed to do was to get out of the school that she was in because she was being bullied and the school environment sucked. She was miserable, which made her sick to her stomach, which made her lose weight, which made her come here because she had a problem that she wanted me to fix. But in reality, the fixing of the problem is by changing the environment. Once you change the environment for that child, things begin to shift beautifully. But if you provide a shit environment at home for your kids, a high stress, like just off the cuff type of uh, environment, the child's cell structure will respond to that. The DNA will start secreting proteins which make the cells suck. This can lead to diabetes, it can lead to cancer, it can lead to Alzheimer's, it can lead to aches and pains and blood pressure, all kinds of shit. This is what is screwing us up. What can you do going forward right away? The first thing that you wanna do is just simply change your attitude just the way your mother and father told you to some time ago. When you shift your attitude, you shift the brain chemistry, you shift what's going into the bloodstream. The bloodstream is then encapsulating the cells. The receptors on the cells then pick up the signal. They tell the nucleus what to produce. The nucleus makes the proteins. The proteins run the inside of the cell and you're off and running. You're either healthy or you're not healthy. And all of this is linked more powerfully to what you believe than anything else. So in my next episode, part three of this, I'm gonna talk about the belief mechanism and how that is so instrumental and so powerful in helping those cells to heal, to give you length to your life and life to the years that you live. We wanna get the most out of life without running right away for drugs and medication. And I'll talk about how the drug companies are simply putting commercials on 24 seven, knowing that you're not gonna go call your doctor and ask them to get on this pill. They're just trying to shift your belief mechanism so that you, your children and your grandchildren continue to patronize them and to run scared without control. And then as a consequence of that, you get sick then they treat the hell out of you, make, take all your money before you die, and they move on to your kids next. I hate to be the cynic, but ladies and gentlemen, that's how it works. That's going to be it for today's episode of Dr. PTV. Stay tuned for the part on belief. I'll talk to you soon.